Hi guys and welcome to U-Wrench. In today's video we're going to be looking at how to test this type of motor. And this is a very common type of motor. It's used uh, throughout your car, things like electric windows, whereas we've got here, this is an electric uh, tailgate release. And also things like wiper motors and things like that all tend to use this type of motor. So this is very, very common. And when you've got a fault in your car and you're trying to find out what it is, you're going through a process of elimination and you come to something like this and you need to know, does this thing actually work or not? And of course, getting this to operate in the usual way by pressing the switch that should activate this isn't. But does that mean that this unit is dead? Well, not necessarily. And that's why it can be really helpful just to run a quick test on these, just so you know whether it's definitely faulty or whether it's OK. Now, you don't have to remove the motor as we've done in this instance. So we've just done this for the sake of filming. You can normally test these uh, where they are in the car. And by far the easiest way to do that is to use uh, one of these tools. And this is called a probe tester. And these probe tools are an absolutely fantastic way of easily testing components around your car without having to remove them. And if you're doing vehicle diagnostics, this can be by far your best friend. And thankfully, they're not very expensive to buy. The uh, cheapest versions of these uh, without the little screen uh, start at about $20 on Amazon. And for the slightly more advanced ones with the screen like we have here, they're only about $60 on Amazon. And we will be adding Amazon links for both versions into the video description below. So if you fancy picking up yourself one of these tools, then please be sure to help support us here at U-Wrench and be sure to use those links. So let's take a quick look at how this tool works. So the way that this tool works is actually connected up to the battery that's in your car. And they usually come uh, with a very, very long cable to allow you to work anywhere on your car. So if your battery's under the hood, you can still be doing work in the trunk. And different kits will come with uh, different accessories. Uh, this is what we need to connect it up to our battery. And additionally, in this uh, kit, we also have this uh, adapter so you can connect it to the uh, cigarette lighter uh, socket inside your vehicle and use that as your testing point as well. And in this particular kit, it also comes with an extension cable, which uh, allows you to work on particularly large vehicles. So we're going to connect it direct to the battery. So I just put those two together. And next up, I just want to attach it to the battery. Uh, live first. Negative second. And the way that this works, you've got a switch uh, in the middle there. And uh, when you press that down, it will feed 12 volts uh, from the battery to the uh, tip of the tool. And attached to the bottom of the tool here, we have our negative. So between the two, we've got negative here and we have positive up on the tip of the tool. So that's it. The tool's now connected and you've got a nice long cable. So as I mentioned before, you can go and test anything you like anywhere in your car. So let's use this to test our motor. If you have a look around your uh, motor, they've usually got one electrical connector, just as we've got on the top here. So normally what you do is you just remove this electrical connector here on the plug and we'd be connecting up our probe uh, into the socket. And these do usually only have two connectors, as we can see here. We've got red and we've got green. And very often these motors are designed to work in two directions. For example, an electric window motor needs to wind in both directions, up and down. And so how it normally works is to move in one direction, uh, one cable would be positive and the other would be negative. And then if you want us to move it in the opposite direction, then they basically get swapped around. So the other cable becomes the positive and the original cable becomes the negative. And if your plug's a little bit more complicated than this, you may well have signal wires as well. But if that is the case, it's usually quite easy to spot the power cables because they're generally considerably thicker than the signal cables. But in the majority of instances, you will only have the two because these are a fairly simple thing. So just to make it easier to see, I'm going to be using this slightly larger plug. So I've traced this uh, cable back with the green and the red connectors. And uh, I've had a look in here and uh, I've located which pins they are. And this is a much bigger connector, so it's gonna be much easier for me to show you uh, on this larger connector. Normally I do it in there, uh, but because like I said, it's very small. We're not gonna be able to see that on the camera. So I'm gonna uh, attach it all up onto the other end of it and uh, have exactly the same effect. I'm gonna connect it in there. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna connect up our negative. Our negative is a little kind of crocodile clip and it does have uh, an isolating sheath uh, over it. What we've got to be careful to do uh, when we're attaching these to pins, especially when the pins are close, uh, cl quite close together, is you don't want to be touching these together and putting power through it. And thankfully these little units do have circuit protection built into them. So you should be protected if you do accidentally touch them together. However, of course, you always want to avoid that possibility. So when you connect these up, you want to uh, connect this uh, negative on to its pin. And when this one goes down next to it, you want to try and make sure that they never touch. So I'm carefully going to connect it onto my first pin. So I now have my negative uh, connected to my first pin. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the very tip of the tool and touch that onto the, uh, the pin inside and then I'll press this button to feed the 12 volts through and hopefully we should see a reaction from the motor. And remember that initially it's just an educated guess about which way around these are. So if you do this and it doesn't uh, activate the motor, don't panic straight away. You should always try them the other way around as well because the motor might be fully wound in one direction and when you've connected it up to go in that same direction, it won't move. When you swap the pins around, it will move in the opposite direction. So always be sure to try it in both directions if you don't get an initial reaction. Just touch that onto the pin and then we'll apply the power. Now, I don't know whether you could see that, but the actual motor on the top, you can see it move. Just moving a little bit here. That's telling me that, that the... Um, that the motor is receiving the power, but as I mentioned before, it's probably in the wrong direction. So what I'm going to do now is going to take my uh, negative, I'm going to connect that up onto the other one of my two pins. And apply the power the opposite way around. So this time we're expecting a reaction from the motor. So as we saw, we got the motor moving, and so we can confirm in this uh, instance that this motor is absolutely A-OK. -okay. This is not a faulty unit. And remember, as I mentioned before, you can use these uh, wherever these motors sit in your car. You don't need to take them out. We've just done that for the sake of illustration. Hopefully you can see what a fantastic bit of kit that these are and how much easier they make testing. When you consider that the basic models of these are only $20 and for what they can do for $20, it's an amazing piece of kit. So please be sure to check out the Amazon links in the video description below if you are interested in picking one of these up. And we hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, can we please ask a favour in return? Can you take one second out of your busy day just to hit that like button for us? It really does help out our YouTube channel. And likewise, please do consider subscribing. We've got loads more great car-related content just waiting for you to check out. We appreciate it. We'll see you on the next video.